Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dabfro Gaming, and this is the next part of our open world RPG tutorial in Retro Gadgets. Um, yeah, Retro Gadgets really isn't meant to be used to create in depth games like this, but um, I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and do it. So here we are. Um, in the last tutorial, what we did is we added uh, some trees here um, and bushes, and I think we added the grass scenery. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to add the building, um, the interactable building, and uh, the inside of the building. And so just to uh, double check, we should have the building sprite already set up. This is our house sprite here. Um, yep, the sizes are correct. The first one's going to be exterior, interior floor, interior wall, and the door. This is going to be the interactable door object um, that we will be using. So, um, if you haven't seen the videos before this, I believe this is part three or four in the series, so I'd recommend going back and watching those if you are interested in creating this. Um, and without further ado, we are just going to jump in. Um, so, just like the previous um, scripts that we did, we are going to be building a building.lua class, right? And so, we'll just go ahead and create that, go into edit, and... We're just going to wipe it clean because it's not going to follow the standard format. So the first thing we'll need for the building is a ROM. And actually, I'm going to tab this down just so it's not right at the top. We're going to need to uh, get a hold of the gadgets ROM. And the main reason being um, the building is going to draw the interior and exterior, depending on where it is. And then that also means we're going to need the video chip, which we set up to control all of our gadget screens. So that way they're one coherent screen. That should be video chip zero. And then we're also going to be using a sprite sheet for the font. And uh, as far as I know, um, this is the only sprite sheet in the game that is used for fonts you might be able to come up with your own custom font sprite sheet. That would be kind of fun to see. Um, but at least from the docs, from what I saw, uh, you know, this is the only built-in standard font that we can use. And then we're going to create our object that we're going to return from this class. We're just going to call it building. And then we're going to have our function building.new. This is kind of going to be used as our constructor in a sense. And let's just go ahead and put the end there so we don't forget to do that. We're going to pass a few parameters here. The X position, which is a number. We're going to pass the Y position, which is also a number. And just the sprite. So we're specifying which sprite we are using as a string. Um, and that's just in case you decide uh, you want various types of buildings. I only have that one building sprite sheet, but if you follow the exact same layout as that, then you could theoretically add uh, more buildings with a little bit more variety. And then the object that our building.new is going to return, we're just going to keep it consistent and call it instance or abbreviate it for instance, right? And then at the end, remember we have to return the instance. And so in instance, this is where we're going to set up our variables for the object. We're going to call it local x is going to be equal to x position. In fact, I'm not sure if I can have a space there, if I'm declaring this in a dictionary. Uh, local Y is going to be equal to the Y position. We're going to have real X. We'll just initialize that to zero. Real Y, initialize that to zero. Keep in mind, those will be updated when the building's um, being moved around, depending on where our, our character is. Uh, the texture is going to be equal to our rom.user.spritesheets and we're going to pass that sprite variable from up here as a string to specify which sprite sheet. Um, let's see here. And then we're going to have our exterior texture. I just like to specify these just to make sure it's constant. That's going to be equal to zero. Uh, our interior floor is going to be equal to 1. And then we have our interior wall. That's going to be equal to 2. 
interior door and that is going to be the third and final texture or sprite there on our sprite sheet um, just going to leave a comment the center of our building is at zero zero just for a little bit of reference and then so the length of the building is going to be equal to 192 you could play around with these a little bit um, keep in mind we want to have the length be length and height of the building should be in increments of 64 because that is the width and height of our uh, texture our floors our wall texture so then the height will be 128 and then the position of our door I, I'd like to keep it um, kind of in the middle here so door X will be equal to 64 and door Y is going to be equal to negative 64 and so that means that the door Y is essentially going to be um, just north I guess if you were to think just above or just north of the center of the building so we're gonna draw this kind of from the center except the buildings not necessarily going to be um, completely centered there you'll you'll see in just a second that might be confusing we might remove this comment but um, let's get into some of the functions we're gonna need for the building so we are going to need a function we'll call it instance and then draw exterior this is very similar to how we did the shrubs and hold on we are going to want to pass a variable in here our scroll X remember from the player and our scroll Y which is also a number from the player and then um, just like we did with the shrubs, we're going to set the real X and real Y depending on the scroll X and scroll Y. Instance dot local X. Instance dot real Y equals scroll Y plus instance dot local Y. Now I'm not going to explain this as much because I already explained this in more depth in the previous video. Um, so you, you should have an understanding of what we're doing and then we're just going to go ahead and draw the exterior building texture um, depending on where it is so this will be a vector 2 for the location that will be our instance dot real X instance dot real Y and then we're going to do the instance dot texture um, and then our instance dot exterior texture which refers to the very first sprite on our sprite sheet and then zero because it is the zeroth row and then color dot white and color dot clear we don't want a background color on this so that way our grass and whatnot can draw behind it and that is looking good for our draw exterior next up we are going to create a draw interior function instance dot draw interior and we again will be using scroll X and scroll Y um, and these are going to be reset by our game controller when the player enters the building um, so again the instance dot real X in fact we could just go ahead and copy this from right here because we want to update again all the interior textures based on where the player is and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the walls in their location first so I'll just leave a little comment for walls we're gonna use a for loop for X equals 0 to 2 we are going to do wall X equals X times 64 plus scroll X because that is where uh, that should move it based on our players scroll X and then we will do wall Y equals negative 64 plus scroll Y and so um, basically what we're doing is we're creating one row of wall 
um, and then the x equals 0 to 2, so it's going to be three walls um, at 0 times 64, which is 0, 1 times 64, 64, and then at 128. So that's what this is. It's just incrementing um, this x variable essentially by 64 each time. That's why we're multiplying it by 64. Um, and then we're only going to have one row of walls there, um, and I think it adds uh, a nice effect. It kind of feels like a Pokemon wall if you guys have played any of those old games. Um, and then let's see here. We are going to want to draw the textures depending on where they are now. So video, draw sprite. We're going to use a vec2 again. It'll be the wall x and wall y. And then our instance.texture, referring to that sprite sheet again. And then instance, this will be for the interior walls. And then zero, and we'll do color dot white, color dot clear. And just in case you forgot, color dot white just means that we're showing the wall in its default color. We're not putting any tint over it when we draw it. Next up, we're going to do the interior floors. So video, draw sprite. In fact, we could just copy this, make it a little bit easier. We're going to do the interior floors and also, um, actually, we'll be doing two different sets of interior floors. So let's just copy this twice and then get the indenting right. I know I could fix this if I just pasted it correctly the first time. but So on this next one, um, we're going to be drawing at wall X. This is going to be wall Y plus 64 because, and then this is going to be our interior floor. So what this is doing, this plus 64 is drawing our floor um, plus 64 units from this wall, which is actually going to be below the wall. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think plus is up, but in this case, it will be down. Um, and then also we are going to draw another set of floors uh, at wall Y plus 128. And so what we've done right here is we're going to have two different rows of floors. And uh, the first one's going to be directly under the wall. And the second one's going to be um, directly under the previous floor. Uh, so we're using our wall Y as a reference here to draw those floors, essentially. And then we have to change this to interior floor as well. And then since we're still in the for loop, we don't have to edit the wall X. This will be iterating th three times um, for the floors and the walls. Now we can go ahead and end that for loop. Um, and then we are going to do the door right here. So we're going to say the door is based on starting position in the room. Um, at least I like to do it that way. Uh, I like to have the door centered. I think it looks nice. You could theoretically move it if you want. But um, if you move the door, you're going to have to do a little bit of math elsewhere in terms of where you want the player to spawn. So it looks like they are just outside the door. So video, draw sprite, and then we're going to do another vec2. And then this will be 64 plus our scroll x. Scroll X is going to be set to zero when we enter the building. Um, so unless it's changed once we're inside the building, um, it should be almost directly in the center. And then we will do negative uh, 64 plus scroll Y. And that should place it on the wall above our character in where we're spawning. Um, let's see here. And then we'll just hit, go ahead and tab down so this doesn't get too long. Instance dot texture, instance dot interior door. So we're referring to that interior door sprite on our sprite sheet. And then zero color dot white color dot clear. Okay, let's see. Go ahead and multiply. It should be scroll X. Uh, what did I do here? 
whoops, that's right. I meant to make this negative. I just used the wrong symbol. Okay. And then we go ahead and end our interior, our draw exterior. Draw interior, draw exterior. We end that function. Did I name this correctly? No, I'm just getting confused. I'm looking up here. Add another space in there just so it's a little bit more readable. In fact, might be nice to add a space there. Okay, so now the next function is we're going to check if our building is interactable. And this is essentially going to display E, uh, say E to enter building um, when we want to enter it. So let's go function instance, and we're going to say is building interactable. And this is going to return a Boolean, true or false value. And let's scroll down a little. We'll say if instance.localx minus 54 is less than or equal to instance.realx and instance.localx minus 24 is greater than or equal to instance.realx, then and the reason I chose these values, it actually took me a little bit of playing around to come out to come up with these. So they are somewhat random. You could fine tune it a little bit. I just found that these are the values that work best for me for when I want to uh, when I want that press E to open door when I want that to show up. Um, so essentially, I want it to show up when the user is right under the door. So actually, we could leave a comment here. Um, Display E to enter and return true when in front of building. Just to explain what this is doing a little bit. So, yep, those will dictate, these values will essentially dictate when we can enter the door depending on our player position. And then we'll say if instance.localY minus 86 is greater than or equal to instance.realy and instance.localy minus instance.localy is less than or equal to instance.realy. Okay, and so um, we're gonna essentially check if we are uh, below the building to a certain extent, 86. Um, like I said, these values, I can't really explain how I got them. I, I just had to play around with them and I found out they work best, uh, just based on my sprite sheet. Um, if you're using your own sprite sheet for the house, um, and your door might be a different size, uh, you don't want it to, you don't want E to display quite in the right in the same place that I have it, um, then you can go ahead and mess around with these just a little bit. And then this is essentially, I mean, we could just say zero here actually, because uh, instance.local y minus instance.local y is just zero, and zero is greater than or equal to our uh, real y. And I got the the then statement there, good. Then we're gonna wanna draw our video, draw text, vector two, 75 and 40 is a good place on the screen, I think. Use our font and it's gonna say E to enter. We'll draw it in white text and the background will just say color dot black. So that way it does have a little border behind the text or a little background color behind the text. And then we'll say return true. And end that and then otherwise we are going to return false. Okay. So 
yeah, I hope this isn't too confusing. Um, basically, like I said, these values just determine where it says press E to enter. Uh, if these two conditions are meant, then it will show our E to enter text and return true, which means we can now enter the door if the player presses the interact button. Otherwise, if these two conditions are not meant, this function will always return false. Now we are going to check if the door is interactable. And this is going to be used for the interior, I believe. Function instance is door interactable boolean another one and this will be our e to exit basically so we could leave a little comment display e to exit and return true when in front of door so this is going to be when we're in front of the building outside this can be when we're in front of the door inside now we'll go ahead and tab this down one so if 90 is less than or equal to instance dot real x and 108 is greater than or equal to instance dot real x then we will do the conditions for the y so if 164 is greater than or equal to our instance dot y and 154 is less than or equal to our instance dot real y then we want to video draw text vector 2 we'll do 7540 again because that's just smack dab center of the screen or roughly center based on the length of this text. Remember it draws from the, uh, the top left of the text. So we have to shift it over just a little bit to account for that. If we want it to be completely centered, it'll be our font. And then we'll do E to exit color dot white color dot black and then return true and end for that if and end for that if and then return false and there should be one final end for the end of that function so just one more thing I thought might be able to help clarify this um, since we're looking at the uh, the real X and the real Y here when we're inside of the building um, this is where the 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 essentially the center so to speak of our building is uh, being drawn physically on screen so if we look at these two values between 90 and 108 um, if we subtract 64 from those uh, for the X then it is roughly you know a 30 to pixel area um, that is around the center of the screen you'll see the door has a little offset on it um, so it's, it's roughly where the door is being drawn when the door is at the center of the screen. That's where these values are coming from. And uh, I can show that once we get this uh, completely programmed out. So then we should return the instance. Um, we should end that. And then lastly, we should return our building object. Okay, next up, we have to go ahead and set up our game logic. So that way the building is being shown and being drawn correctly. And so we will be editing quite a few functions here to get this uh, set up and working correctly. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and require our building script. So local building is going to be equal to require. This will be our building.lua and then um, let's see here we have a background holder a shrub holder we're gonna have a building holder just in case you want to have multiple buildings even though my example only uses one you can keep track of all of them with this and then we're gonna also have a local current building just to specify 
the building that uh, we are currently in if uh, we have entered one. And then we also have to import the font. We'll go ahead and do that up here at the top. So local font is what we'll call it. And then the sprite sheet equals rom.system dot sprite sheets. Oh, did I mess up here? Oh, this doesn't have a reference to our ROM, does it? So we might actually want to import that first. I'm going to move this around, do our hardware imports first. So local ROM should be a ROM object. Gadget.ROM. Um, I could just use a capital R here, but... I like to import it anyways. And then this should be our standard font. The built-in font is what it is. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we have to edit here. We have our draw background, draw shrubs, draw foreground. We'll be editing these because we want the building to be drawn in the background and in the foreground. And then we're also going to need a setup building function. So I am just going to start with uh, draw. Let's set up our draw buildings function first. Draw buildings and setup buildings, since that's basically the formula that we've been using. I'll just go ahead and set them up here. Function setup building buildings. And then we're just going to go local B equals building should be capital B if we're referring to our object building dot new 100 100 and then whoops and then our building texture is called house sprite dot PNG and we'll just go ahead and add it to the building holder as the only object there and so the key for that in the dictionary we'll just say is one the key is not super important but building holder of one equals b and why are we getting an error here did i spell that wrong oh is it case sensitive it looks like it was case sensitive Okay, so we're just setting up one building. If you want to set up multiple, you could look up, look at set up shrubs, use a for loop, kind of generate these in random places, um, or you could do really specific values if you want to set up a more personalized scene. Um, we're just going to be setting up one building um, to show that it works. And then we will create our draw buildings function. We'll just do that right under here. And then for key B in pairs of building holder, do B draw exterior is the function that we created. And we're going to pass our player dot scroll X and player dot scroll Y. This is, again, almost identical to draw background and draw shrubs. Um, I just like to keep these functions small. So that way, uh, if you ever need to change something, you know exactly where to look. Okay, so there's setup buildings, draw buildings. Now let's go ahead and edit our draw background and draw foreground function for the building. So we have setup background, setup shrubs. There we go, draw background. So in draw background, we have update location, player.x, the background holder. I see, so we're calling that. So actually, we could just go ahead and do this probably in the update function. Eh, 
Actually, we're going to change the update function. Sorry, I'm a little indecisive. We're going to take our draw shrubs call and we are going to put it into draw background at the end here. So we only have to call one function and then we're going to call draw buildings after draw shrubs because we want the building to be in front of the shrub when we draw the background. So that should be it for draw background, and then we will only call that function on update. Whoops. Now for draw foreground, we are going to put in some logic here. So we do the shrubs first, and then we will do the buildings after the shrubs. So this will be after that for loop for the bushes. We'll do for key building in pairs of building holder we are going to check first if the building fits uh, if uh, if we're in front of the building or if technically if we're behind it like if the player position is uh, behind our clipping value then we'll check um, if building dot real y so where it's being drawn on the screen is greater than or equal to our clipping y just like we did up here then building draw exterior and again player dot scroll x player dot scroll y and then we are going to check if the player can enter the building under this and basically this is going to be um, if we're not behind the building then we should be in front of it so therefore we'll put an else statement here actually maybe it'd be good to put our comment under the else so if we're in front of the building then we will go if uh, our building, get that boolean value, is building interactable. Oh geez, I keep spelling this terribly wrong. Is building interactable? Huh, that should have had autocomplete, so maybe I spelled something wrong. Um, we'll have to go back and check that later. But uh, if uh, the building is interactable and our player uh, is interacting, remember we set that up on the player controller. If that's also equal to true, then we are going to do player dot scroll x equals zero player dot scroll y will be equal to 50 this this is going to be the location inside the building essentially on where we want our player to spawn all right i'm not sure why i started using commas here and then uh player dot is inside should be equal to true wow and current building is going to be equal to building just to keep track of which building that we're actually in and then we'll have to end that if statement we will have to end that if else statement and then we're also going to have to end um, this for loop right here. Uh, I took a bit of a break from retro gadgets, so sorry if this tutorial doesn't feel quite as clean. Um, I gave myself a bit of a refresher beforehand to make sure I know what we're doing, but uh, looks like I'm a little out of practice, so I apologize. And of course, we will want to set up the building in our setup functions, set up buildings. And um, we are going to, that should be it for our draw foreground. Now, we're also going to want to um, set up a draw inside, a draw outside function. 
and then uh, update inside function for when we're actually in the building. And we're going to want to check if the player is anywhere near some of the building walls. So let's go ahead and just do the uh, check building borders. Set a background, okay. So function check building borders. Now this is going to essentially stop our player from going outside of the building walls um, depending on their location. So this is a function that I debated whether or not this should go on the building versus on the game controller. But ultimately I thought, you know, since it is determining the player's location, uh, that I thought that would be something the game controller would handle more than our building um, object should. So player.scroll x, we're going to check if it is less than negative one times our current building dot length divided by two plus 16. So the plus 16 is for half of our character, um, our character width there. And then uh, length divided by two um, just is, it's essentially the left hand side of our building. And then we'll just say player dot scroll X is equal to negative one times the current building dot length divided by two plus 16. So essentially the, all of these are going to follow the uh, exact same formula. Otherwise, if the player dot scroll X is greater than our current building dot length divided by two minus 16, then we will set it to this value right here. Put an end and then we'll have a separate if else conditional for our player dot y. If our scroll y is less than negative one times the current building dot height divided by two plus 16. Then player dot scroll y equals negative one times the current building dot height divided by two plus 16. And then we'll have an else if for the bottom of the building. Otherwise, if our scroll y is greater than our current building dot height divided by two minus 16 should be actually, no, it looks like we just did, I just did a uh, player dot scroll y greater than current building dot height divided by two. Um, then, and actually the reason for that is this is going to be checking for the bottom. Um, and if we're at the bottom, we don't want to adjust for 16 pixels because we just want the bottom of our player to be, uh, unable to move past the floor. So player dot scroll Y equals current building dot height divided by two. And we should do an end statement there. And I just want to check that I got this conditional correct. Yeah, make sure that's greater. All right. That should be good for our check building borders. Okay, so last but not least, we have our update outside and update inside functions. And this dichotomy is essentially just used to determine um, if we should be drawing the building and checking the building borders um, 
or if we should just be doing our normal draw background, draw foreground loop uh, when the player's outside of the building. So function, we'll go update outside. This is essentially going to be replacing what we have down here in our update functions. Um, draw background first, then we want to update the player. And then we will do our draw foreground. Basically exactly what we had down here. And then for our update inside, What we are going to do is first check the building borders for the player position. We're going to go current building, draw interior with the uh, player dot scroll X, player dot scroll Y. Then we're going to go player, update player, and then this is if you wanted to, this would be um, where you put in any foreground building items. If you had like stool objects or maybe some benches, some chairs, this is where you would uh, add code for that. So we'll say foreground building code here. I don't have any of that in this tutorial series, but um, if you wanted to expand that, then uh, that's how you do it. And then what we're going to do is essentially check if our door is interactable. And if it is, then we will draw that interaction and uh, check if the player is also uh, wanting to leave the building. So if our current building is door interactable is equal to true and the player dot is interacting is equal to true then we'll say player dot is inside is now equal to false uh, player dot scroll x is going to be equal to negative one times the current building dot local y or local x excuse me plus 64 this these two uh, lines right here are essentially going to be the coordinates for where our player spawns outside of the building so it's going to be based on the building's local X location, which is its exterior location. And then player dot scroll Y is going to be equal to negative one times the current building dot local Y minus five. Now I, I've set up the plus 64 and minus five in such a way that I don't want the player to be able to enter the building immediately when they exit. So I don't want the building, the door or the building to be interactable when they leave it, just because when you press E, there's actually a, a few frames in there where the button is still being held down and uh, you would just keep going back and forth inside the building multiple times and uh, it wouldn't let you leave. So that's what these little offsets are doing. Just making sure that the building's not interactable again immediately after we leave. Okay. Now, I think we can go ahead and do our new update function. We'll just go ahead and clear all that. Um, of course, we'll start off with video clear with color black. Color's not super important, but we just want to clear everything. Um, and then we'll say if the player dot is inside, then we want to call our update inside and then else if player dot is inside is equal to false i should be consistent and use the uh, parentheses there so if the player is not inside, then we'll call our new update outside function. And okay, now I think that is it for our game controller, and this should be working. Uh, I know it wasn't quite on point today, so there's a good chance we're going to come across some errors. Actually, okay, that's a good start.
let's take a look. So here we have the building at our location 100, 100. And if we come up to it, there we go. First runtime exception at CPU zero. Let's see here. String building.lua at line 62. Invalid argument number two. User data expected but got nil. Is building interactable? Well, either we're calling something wrong or it's possible that our is building interactable is expecting some parameters. So I will figure this out. All right. So if we come over here and look at line 62, I know this might be kind of hard to see because those numbers are so small. Um, we have our video draw text and it looks like parameter two is our font. If we come up here and take a look at our font, I actually spelled standard wrong and I said stand font. So that should be standard font. And that way it's referring to the correct font. Let's go ahead and run it again and see if that fixed the issue. There we go. Now we have our E to enter and it is only when we're right in front of the building. And we can also clip behind the building. So we know our draw foreground, draw background is working. Let's see if our draw inside is working. And we got another runtime exception. So let's go back over to our game controller, see if we can find out um, what's going on. Attempt to call missing method draw interior of table. Yeah, so actually I was I was thinking I might have spelled this wrong um, in our game script. We'll go ahead and check it out. Yep, and it looks like draw interior should not have a capital. Go ahead and pause the runtime. And uh, if you recall that error when it said this function is missing from the table, it's because uh, our, our building object, this is essentially a table, and each function call is an item in the table um, that we're specifically referring to. So uh, it's just saying that that function is missing in our building class. So if we go back to game controller, scroll down here to our, I think it was update inside. Yep, draw interior, that should not have a capital D. And uh, let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, press E to enter. We are now successfully inside the building. So you can see it is one, two, three textures wide like we did in that for loop. And then we have one, two different sets of building floors. Now let's check the left and the right. Yep, so we can't walk any further to the left there. Let's see, we can't walk, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Looks like we have an issue here. Attempt to perform arithmetic on a number and table. So player.scrollx equals negative one times current building dot length is what that should be, not just current building. And let's go ahead and double check that we have dot height and dot length in here. Yep, looks good. All right, come back over to the building, press E to enter. All right, we can't walk further any higher than this. And we can't walk to the right any further than that. And here we go, we can't walk any further down. Perfect. So the one thing I wanted to say is that when I was talking about the spawn location, we go ahead and exit. See how when I exit, I can't immediately enter the building. I want, I want that to be the case because when you press E, it actually is pressed for a few different frames there. And it's possible that your player would enter and exit the building multiple times and you'd have no idea. Um, which side they'd be on depending on how hard they press or how long they press E for. Um, so that's just the solution I came up with. I know you could set up, uh, I did try setting up button events to see if that would fix it without any luck, um, but this method seems to work just fine. So press E to exit, press E to enter, perfect. And then it's spawning us, if we, if we enter, it's spawning us just south of the door. Um, so that zero, zero point where I said the center of the building, it's not really the center. It's just this spot right here, um, essentially in the middle of the building because we're drawing it left to right. Or I guess, yeah, I, I believe it's right here. And then um, 
if we go ahead and leave the building, then we are spawned right outside of it. All right, guys, I am going to call it there and end the video. Um, we have pretty much done everything that I set out to do um, just in this fun little project. Uh, the code's not thoroughly tested. I do want to warn you of that. Um, and, you know, this was just kind of a fun project I wanted to share just in case anyone was looking to expand their abilities in retro gadgets um, or even in, you know, kind of game development. I wouldn't say that this is probably the best setup for a large scale scale game in Lua. Um, this is one way to do it, but I'm sure there's probably better ways out there that I'm just not aware of. Um, I don't have a ton of experience in game programming, so just keep that in mind. This was just kind of supposed to be a fun little thing that I was showing off. Um, so if, if there are bugs, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try and get to it. Um, if you do come across some funky behavior, uh, I'll try and take a look at it. Otherwise, uh, I did see one request for, you know, maybe some player uh, or some enemies for the player to fight and maybe a health bar. So if I have some free time, I'll look into trying to sort that out. Um, but as is, it, it took me way too long to get this video out. And I'm worried I already made mistakes because I took a break from Retro Gadgets. So I'm going to call it there. Um, if I helped you guys out, please leave a like. I don't usually do these coding tutorials, but I just had the inspiration one day to come out with a few videos. So um, that's basically where we're at. Uh, if you got through this far in the video, then thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.